Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, my name is Emin Gün Sirer. I'm the CEO of Ava Labs, and I'm a professor at Cornell University, where I've been researching peer-to-peer -peer systems and cryptocurrencies for some time. Uh, by some time, I mean going back to 2002. So I was in this space before Satoshi, uh, working on proof-of-work minting uh, and proof-of-work currencies. Um, and some of you might know me from my work on Bitcoin mining. Others might know me from uh, the role I played in Ethereum and the DAO hack. And yet others might know me from fundamental contributions to cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'm also a co-director at the Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Smart Contracts, which is a uh, eight university, um, you know, 150 researcher, uh, the biggest uh, academic establishment of its kind, researching the science and engineering of blockchains. I'm here today to talk about, uh, about blockchains in general. So we stand poised at the start of a ginormous revolution that is uh, destined to change the way we conduct business. I don't just mean that we're going to be changing the back office. I don't just mean that we're going to be changing trading systems. I don't mean that there are going to be some small transparent changes uh, to the, the back end of businesses. I mean that the entirety of the financial infrastructure as we know it is under question. It's being undermined by a completely different infrastructure that changes the way people make money and creates new opportunities for newcomers. The incumbents that are making money by having established a dominant market position, by having created vertically isolated silos are, are, uh, are essentially kind of like the dinosaurs facing a meteor with blockchain written on it. At the same time, small companies with very limited resources are now able to play on an even uh, playing field with financial giants of the world. And this combination allows for a lot of innovation to happen in the, uh, in the blockchain space. Now, having said that, um, and having looked at what happened uh, in the last 10 years with the different assets, uh, the picture, the, the path forward from here is not completely rosy. There exist three big challenges up ahead for blockchains to face, to surmount, before we can actually go and change the way businesses operate. And what are those challenges? The first one is scale and performance. Blockchains as we know them today are incredibly slow. They operate at the speed of five to 15 transactions per second. They take about an hour for finalization. And uh, they only admit a small number of participants into the protocol. So if I take Bitcoin, for example, which is a wonderful system, it's aiming to compete with the US dollar for dominance. So that's a tall order. And we, of course, wish it luck. I hope Bitcoin succeeds. But it's trying to replace fiat. And in doing so, it pr proposes a system whose base layer uh, admits about a few dozen mining pools. Uh, whose transaction latencies are about an hour and uh, whose speed is about a few transactions per second. So it's suitable as a, as a store of value perhaps, but it's not suitable for digitizing uh, other kinds of assets. Now, second big problem with systems is that all blockchains today are extra legal. They, are, uh, they do not operate within the confines of any legal foundation that we are familiar with. They build their own law, they build their own rules, and they're unable to accommodate any extensions to the rules that are built into the base layer. This is a huge problem. If you go talk to any enterprises today that want to issue their own assets, such as, say, uh, bonds, corporate bonds, credit default swaps, etc., they want to issue something that can be, or NFTs even. Um, so anything in between, anything that's represented on a blockchain, they simply have two options today. Uh, an enterprise can use a public blockchain where they lose control of the asset. Any bugs in their code will, co will be catastrophic for them. Or they can use a private blockchain where they can bring their own rules, but private blockchains, as you all know, have gone absolutely nowhere in the last 10 years. They are destined to, to fall apart because they're too fragile to maintain. And there is nothing in the middle with current technology. And the third and final big problem that current systems face has to do with governance. It is very, very difficult, as you all know, to make plans that extend into the future. It's very difficult for any country to make plans with its economy that extend 10, 15, 20 years into the future. Um, it's essentially impossible 
to make plans that uh, today that will hold for all eternity. That is just too, too difficult a task. And uh, so what do you need to do when you cannot plan to, when you cannot foresee the future perfectly? Well, you need to have some way of changing parameters dynamically. As economic conditions change, we need to be able to change what we do on blockchains. We need to change what they do underneath technically. We might need to change their economic parameters like reward rates, like uh, uh, the stake amounts, etc. Things that actually attract money flows in and out of certain aspects of the system have to be dynamically adjusted in just about every system. And to hope that somebody could have the prescience of Satoshi Nakamoto and come up with a single curve that will be perfect for all time to come is just too tall an order, too difficult a task. So um, those are the three big problems as I see them today. Scale and performance, flexibility or lack thereof, and finally, lack of governance in current platforms. Um, what I have done with my research team at Cornell and uh, having forked it out of Cornell University and at, at having created a company about a year ago called Avalanche, uh, called, called Avalabs, building a system called Avalanche with a token called Avax, A-V-A-X, is a brand new blockchain platform uh, based around a breakthrough in my area of expertise, distributed systems. Avalanche at its core has a fundamentally different approach to the way blockchains are built. It's uh, superficially kind of similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the consensus mechanism underneath is, is the biggest breakthrough since the Satoshi white paper. It is the third biggest event in the last 45 years of research in distributed systems. The area is only 45 years old, and in that time, we had classical protocols, we had Nakamoto consensus in the form of Bitcoin, and now we have Avalanche. Because Avalanche operates differently, it is capable of, of, uh, of finalizing transactions in under a second. It's capable of achieving about 6,500, 6,500 transactions per second, approximately three times the speed of Visa. And... Uh, uh, it is also capable of accommodating millions of participants into the system, as opposed to a few dozen miners and mining pools or um, uh, validators, as you see with EOS and others, uh, or as you see with Libra. So, um, so that's one big innovation it brings. The second big innovation with Avalanche is that it changes the way the system works uh, such that the system can support multiple virtual machines, custom tailored for different kinds of assets, and multiple networks where those networks can accommodate local rules and regulations. So Avalanche can create a subnetwork destined for the European Union, a subnetwork destined for the US, and a subnetwork for China and so on. And these nodes are then bound by the rules of those ju jurisdictions. It can also create uh, networks that span the globe. Uh, it can also create networks where every participant has agreed to an arbitration clause uh, that uh, dictates how problems will be resolved in case they arise in practice. And finally, Avalanche is different in that it accommodates limited governance. Key economic parameters are not fixed for all time because nobody can uh, hope to get them perfect, but instead can be modified on the fly. This has made Avalanche a big starter in the space of blockchains. Uh, we uh, started about a, a year ago we are now on mainnet. We have been for three weeks on mainnet today. Uh, so it's a relatively young system. And in that time, it has been listed on every major exchange. It has received funding and buy-in from just about every major country, uh, certainly every country with a technological presence. So um, I'm really proud to stand here today and talk to you about these issues where I think everybody knows are the big burning problems of the day in blockchains. Blockchains are no longer slow databases. They no longer need to be coupled with a layer two. They can resolve things at layer one and they can go after assets and digitize assets that are not currently in blockchain form. We do not see our, our, our mission as being that of uh, questioning the supremacy of any fiat currency. So we're not out there competing with the dollar. We are not a Bitcoin competitor. We, um, we are instead a very flexible platform for creating new coins on top. We're much faster than Ethereum, 
and we're much lower cost than Ethereum. We, in fact, because we're flexible, we embody the entirety of the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, and support every single smart contract that, that currently works on Ethereum on top of our own foundation. So I encourage you to take a look at Avalanche because there's this misconception among many circles that blockchains are slow, ungovernable, difficult to deal with, inflexible, and so on. And these problems have now been addressed. There is new foundational breakthroughs that change the game. This is not window dressing. It's not a different way of measuring things. There have been many other people who've claimed large numbers of transactions per second using Trace. These, this is a genuinely uh, decentralized, in fact, this is the most decentralized system out there that is also the fastest system out there in terms of latency, one of the fastest when it comes to fee. So I encourage you to take a look. We have a different mission in life. We have a lot of buy-in from large blue chip companies in the US and elsewhere. And uh, we have a lot of buy-in from financial companies in New York City where I uh, speak today. Uh, we would love to hear feedback. And if you're interested, you can be found at avalabs.org online. Thank you so much for your time.